For the next hour, the green and gold are in charge. <laughs> now, here's Bill Scott and Green Bay offensive lineman T.J. Lang. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fifth quarter in Little Shoots. We are back here another Monday night after a Packers victory. They knock off the Buffalo Bills yesterday 34-7. to And T.J. Lang, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. 23 years old. 23 years young. Are you a day smarter now, or are you smarter? <laughs> yeah, I feel a lot older. I don't all know right. what's going on, but... All right. That's nice. <laughs> we got a little happy birthday going on. So the uh, the Packers <laughs> win it yesterday, 34-7. to And for a while there, it kind of looked like there was a little bit of a struggle in uh, the second quarter in particular, and then you come out in the second half and kind of got things done. But I heard that Mike McCarthy had a little bit, a few things to say to you guys at halftime. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we... we we kind of had a few setbacks there towards the you know end of this first half, and uh, came in at halftime, and uh, you know we felt like we we adjusted the problems that were going on in the first half, and we came out and started fast in the second or third quarter, and uh, you know ended up pulling away from them, uh, got a pretty good lead, and uh, you know defense took over from there. You know we, we closed the game out on them. Yeah, a couple of field goals early on drives. The good news you got down there. The, you know certainly you want to convert those in, into touchdowns instead of field goals, but you know it's kind of one of those things. I, I like Buffalo defensively. Uh, for a while there, their, their defense was just on the field the whole game, and eventually you wore them out. But I, I thought early on their defense was actually pretty reputable. Yeah, they uh, and, and they're they got a, they got a talented group on defense. They got a, a lot of young guys, but uh, you know they changed to a three four this year. And um, you know last week against Miami they did a great job too. And and uh, they they certainly gave us a little bit of trouble there in the first half. And uh, you know like you said, once we once we were able to get our tempo going as offense, we uh, we felt like we kind of wore them down a little bit, and and we started to have our way with them. So. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were happy with how we performed uh, in the second half. You know, we, uh, we came out and, and we, we, got, we got the job done. Looking out on the field about the midway mark of the second quarter, and uh, there we see our first-round draft pick, Brian Belaga, who's been on the show already this year. And, uh, and, and you know, he's out there and, and actually played pretty well yesterday. Yeah, Brian played, uh, you know, he played as well as he could have possibly played, I thought. Uh, you know, watching him from the sidelines and, and watching the film today, he, he went in there and, uh, you know, he, he was obviously nervous a little bit going in for his first time, but I thought he handled himself great, um, and he, he, played a, he played a great game, and uh, he was one of the reasons why we were able to get the ball rolling in the second half. He, he did his job, and, and he was blocking his man consistently. When you guys go and, and you, you do the film stuff and you get grades graded out, uh, who, who does that? Is that the offensive coordinator, the uh, the position, position coaches. coach? Yeah, position coaches do that. They, uh, you know, the offense coordinator. I imagine it'd probably be pretty hard for Coach Philbin to grade everybody out, but the pos position to coaches take that uh, responsibility, and um, you know, obviously, they know what we're supposed to be doing every play. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, when that comes out, like for example, what's the scale? One to a hundred. Um, Basically, I mean, every play you either get a plus or a minus, okay. and then they, you know, take the percentage, and um, depending on, you know, what your percentage was, and and uh, obviously if you if you block your man consistently, uh, you either get a winning or losing performance. So, um, you know, it's it's pretty basic skill. So, so Balaga got a winning performance, and yeah, I'm, I mean, I would imagine so. You know, we, we don't really you guys go don't compare grades. grades or anything. Uh, like that? I mean, you know, we you can you can pretty much know how you play and. I mean, got, some of the guys go up and ask the coach, but uh, you know, per, watching yourself on film, watching the other guys, you have a you have a good idea of how they grade it out. And I thought Brian did a fantastic job. First game without Ryan Grant yesterday. We'll get uh, certainly uh, much more of an opinion from John Kuhn when he joins us in the uh, next segment. But uh, your, your initial thoughts? I thought it went well. You know, uh, we had guys stepped up, uh, played to Ryan and uh, uh, John and Brian over back there and. And uh, they, they played a good game. They were able to get us yards on the ground. And, um, you know, as offensive line, you know, when, when Ryan went out, uh, we feel like we have a lot of capable backs, uh, you know, behind Ryan that we're playing. So, um, you know, we, we didn't have to change our game plan at all. Those guys can all run the ball. They all run the ball hard. And, and they get us yards. So, uh, you know, they, they did a great job yesterday. They really split the carries, you know, almost fairly evenly amongst the, the at least the top backs. And, uh, you know, John Kuhn ended up as the leading rusher yesterday, but uh, what, what's the thinking there? Uh, is it just early in the season they don't want to overdo it? I'm not sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, with the, with the different formations we have in the personnel, you know, you, sometimes you want to get uh, your best players out on the field. And, um, you know, also, you, you know, you can, we use our, we use our uh, formations and our personnel to kind of confuse the defense sometimes too. So, uh, you know, you never want to 
be out there with the you know personnel in there and have the defense know what you're running. So uh, we did a great job switching it up, and both those guys uh, they did a good job for us. I bet you guys as offensive linemen are glad that you don't have to do all that shuffling back and forth and running. I mean, you always know, almost <laughs> seem like a traffic cop out there in the sidelines. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's. It's pretty good when we get to settle into our own spot. And I know last year we had a lot of shuffling going on, you know, with Darren moving out to left tackle and, and guys switching positions. So uh, when we're able to stay healthy and, and uh, you know, play in one position, it's, you know, you get your confidence going. And, and you obviously are playing next to a guy that you've played next to for, you know, the whole training yeah. camp and the whole season so far. So. Yeah, I mean, if you if you had to run as many times to the sidelines as oh, other yeah. guys do, we'd, you'd probably be, be pretty tired. Tired. <laughs> Yeah, we'd be pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 91 carries, or 91 yards, 27 carries, 71 of those were from the running back. Uh, and we'll again, we'll talk more with uh, John about that. Uh, Clay Matthews, three more sacks to give him six on the season. Um, he's on pace for 48. <laughs> That would probably set some kind of a record. Huh? Yeah, you know, Ke Kevin. <laughs> I was talking with Kevin Green, the uh, linebackers coach, this afternoon, and he said that uh, he, he said that Clay Matthews is a far better athlete than he ever was. And so, you're, you know, here we are. We're thinking, well, you know, Kevin, you are the all-time outside linebackers sack leader in NFL history. And if Clay Matthews is head and shoulders above where you are as an athlete. Uh, he's going to be a pretty special player, and, and that's basically what he's saying. He said uh, if, if Clay Matthews hangs around, stays injury-free, that he'll shatter the sack records. Yeah, well, Clay's a special player. I mean, he's, you know, in my mind, he's a, he's a total package. What you need is outside backer. He can run. Uh, he's got good size and, and certainly has good power. So, uh, you know, it, it's tough blocking him. I mean, you know, he's a guy that's going to – He's got a motor on him. He's not going to stop until that whistle blows. So uh, clearly, you know, you saw that again yesterday. He was, you know, obviously led our defense again with three sacks. And, uh, you know, he's just he's a great asset to our defense. And, and guys look to him to, uh, you know, pick us up sometimes when, when we're struggling. And, and he, he did another fantastic job yesterday. Yeah, he's got the speed of a, of a small outside linebacker, and yet he's got the strength of 255 to be able to take on tackles. Yesterday, he knocked the Buffalo right tackle right on his keister, yeah. and the only reason he didn't sack the quarterback is he tripped over him on the way. So I saw it, that. Yeah, kind of gives you an idea what uh, you're dealing with with Clay Matthews. All right, we'll talk more about that. We'll talk about some of the defensive packages that uh, you know you guys go against that stuff in practice on a daily basis, and uh, we'll find out what the psycho package is all about. That's pretty good, and it's working like a charm. We'll be back with our guest here on the program, back with more after this from the fifth quarter in Little Shoot on the Woodward Radio Network.